So it's a second parasha of Hamisha Hamishetava, second week of the war. Still very hard to get back into things, especially here in El Tisrael. Not many people have gotten back into things. But this week, we wanted to talk about not the Mabu, not the destruction of the world, but rather what comes after. The Keshit, the rainbow that HaKadosh Baruch Hu promises to show the world. Yeah, it's not so clear. Rainbow is a nice thing. It's a beautiful thing. But when we look in the Psukim, it's not so clear who this covenant is between who and who. HaKadosh Baruch Hu and us. But what is our side in all of this? Exactly. And it's not clear between who the covenant is, but also it's not clear what is this rainbow really about. And when you look at the Psukim, it's kind of different than what we were taught in kindergarten, that this rainbow is here to tell us that the spoke is man of the world. No, there's a way, way deeper message in the rainbow, a super, super relevant message for us today for what's going on within the rainbow. If you want to take a look, hope you enjoy it. Second parsha of the Chavishah Chum Sheitova, week number two also of the war here in Eretz Yisrael. This week for Parashat Noach, you kind of want to talk about the destruction of the world, of the Mabul, and how it happened, and what it did to the world, and why it had to come. But what I want to focus this year is on what happens after the Mabul, after Noach comes out of the Teva. HaKadosh Baruch Hu commands Noach to rebuild the world. And then HaKadosh Baruch Hu does a covenant, a brit with Noach, and says to him that from now on, I will not get this upset anymore. I will not destroy the world anymore. And instead, if ever we get to this position again, then there will be a rainbow, the Keshet Ba'ana, the rainbow in the cloud. And what I want to understand is a few things. First of all, what is the idea behind this rainbow? What is it about? What is this rainbow thing? It's like one of these things that you grew up with and we got so used to it, but hold on a second. What is it doing? What is this even about? Having a rainbow in the sky in order to stop HaKadosh Baruch Hu from destroying the world? What is going on over here? But even more so, when you look in the Psukim, it becomes even more confusing because when you have a covenant, a covenant is usually between two sides. But over here, HaKadosh Baruch Hu seems to say that he's making a covenant between him and Noah and the world, but only HaKadosh Baruch Hu is taking something upon himself. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, I will not destroy the world. So where is the other side of the covenant? What do the people of the world, what do Bnei Noach take on themselves in this covenant? So what is this entire story of the Keshet Be'anan, of the rainbow, all about? Yeah, that's really confusing. If Hashem doesn't want to destroy the world, He can just decide. He's not going to destroy the world. Why does He even need a covenant here? But I think to understand this, if we go a little bit back in the Psukim, what happened just before that, I think we get the explanation. What we have just before this talks about Hashem telling man, that you have to have children, you have to build the world, you have to spread around the world. And if you think about it, after seeing all this destruction, the most natural thing is, you know, what's the point? Why should I rebuild this world? Noah comes out of the Teva, sees so much destruction. And what's the point? What's the point of having children? What's the point of, of trying again? I know how this ends. And maybe that's exactly what's happening here. Hashem turns to Noah and says, you do your part. You rebuild this world and I'll do my part. And that's the covenant. I'll protect the world. I will not destroy the world again, but you do your best to rebuild this world. And we'll do that together. And that's what Hashem describes. There's a covenant between Him and the Aretz. But then sometimes, as the Psukim say, sometimes clouds come between us. Sometimes there are dark times. We know those dark times. We're living in one of these dark times. And in those dark times, says Hashem, there will be that rainbow. And if we think about this for a minute, what is a rainbow actually? A rainbow is when those clouds are there, when the rain is coming down, when it seems like another mabul is coming to the world. But when the light, the sun cracks through the clouds and meets that rain, when that darkness, when that maybe mabu, when it hits the light together, that's when the rainbow appears. In other words, the rainbow is a symbol of, yes, there is darkness, but that darkness isn't total. It's not complete. There's a crack of light that still can shine through. But I think it's more than that because the rainbow doesn't appear on a sunny day. The rainbow isn't there when it's all light. The rainbow only appears. That's when we see the rainbow, when there's this mixture, when there's this mabul almost, and the sun hitting together, that's when the rainbow appears. And we know based on the Gemara and Chagiga that you're not supposed to look at a rainbow because the rainbow represents Kvod Hashem. Godliness in the world is expressed through this rainbow. Dafka the rainbow that shines in this darkness, from within this darkness, this light that's not just regular light. It's a light that shines Dafka from that darkness. That's when you see that godliness. I think there's two levels to this. The first, if we go a little bit further back in the 
psukim. When does Hashem say He's not going to destroy the world? When suddenly He sees Noach bringing the korbanot. And what does He say? He says, I know man is man. He's not perfect. He's not a malach. But that's the beauty. The most beautiful thing is not that the malachim we know serve God. That's obvious. It's that man that has that darkness in him still brings light into the world. That combination of human beings that aren't perfect, that as we discussed last week, can even destroy the world. When they elevate the world, that's when the most beautiful light shows up. So both from man's side of understanding that yes, I know man isn't perfect, but I know that the greatest light can shine from that imperfectness and also us recognizing that yeah, even when we see those clouds coming, even when we see the dark times, Dafka within that darkness, not when the darkness goes away, then the rainbow appears, the opposite. While the darkness is still there, if you look carefully, suddenly the light can penetrate in the most beautiful moments and that's when you can suddenly see God godliness in this world. Dafka from within that darkness, that's when you can see that rainbow. Very good, very good. I think this message of exactly what you're saying, that Dafka in the darkness, you can see the rainbow, I think is kind of missing from the story of the rainbow that we were taught in kindergarten. Because we were all taught that the rainbow is there as a reminder that when a Kodesh Bokhu wants to destroy the world, then there's a rainbow. So a rainbow means that a Kodesh Bokhu wanted to destroy the world. But that's not what it actually means. Because when you look at the Psukim, it is very, very clear what the rainbow's purpose is. First of all, Kodesh Bokhu says, Et tati First of all, the rainbow is in the cloud. It's there. It's in the cloud. The Anan has the rainbow in it. And then the Pasuk says, That when the clouds are being clouded on the land, that's when the rainbow is revealed. That's when you can see the rainbow. Meaning to say exactly what you're saying. The rainbow has a very, very strong message. To it. The message, which is actually super relevant for us today. The message of, the message that we see in Purim, the message that we see in so many times in the Jewish history, that even when God conceals himself, even in times that Hashem hides himself, and not only one time, but in a double hiding, the same thing here, when I cloud with clouds, I'm not putting clouds, I'm clouding with clouds, it's going to be super dark, it's going to be the darkest of all darkness, even then, the Keshet is already inside, the rainbow is already inside. So then when it gets all dark of the darkness, that's when Vinilata Keshet. That's when you go and look at the Keshet. And again, most importantly, the Keshet is not for us. If you look in Sokim, the Keshet is for Kadash Borhu. The Zacharti and Briti says Akadash Borhu. I will remember the covenant. Akadash Borhu is the one who sees the Keshet, not us. The same words that are used in Parashat Bechukatai, the terrible Tochacha. The Zacharti and Briti Yaakov, Vafet Briti Yitzchak, Vaf Abraham Esko, Vered Aretz Esko. After all the terrible things that will happen, Akadash Borhu will remember. He's going to remember on his own. And maybe this is the biggest comfort of all to know that he is remembering. Because it's not even that in the darkness of all darkness, no, it's Davka, it's in the darkness of all darkness. Of course, there, that's where Gadish Borchu is. There is where the Keshet is. The Keshet is in the Anan. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one to see this Keshet. And this is what reminds him about us, about our covenant together with him, that we are here to build this world, that we are here to add good in this world. And this darkness that came onto the world, this darkness of destruction of the ones that want to ruin this world, of the ones who want to destroy this world, we will overcome them. We will overcome them with good. We will overcome them with building the world, with with filling the world with good. This is what the Keshet is all about. And this is the super relevant message for us this week here in Eretz Yisrael and around the world to keep on reminding ourselves the two things. First of all, we are here to continue building, to continue bringing good into the world. What happened, we can't undo. We can't turn back time, but we can continue moving forwards with the strength to build more and to add more good in the world and at the same time destroy the evil, at the same time fight the evil, recognize it and erase it from the world so it doesn't exist anymore. But on top of all, reminding ourselves that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is there, reminding ourselves V'kashtin atati be'anan, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is always there, even in the darkest of all darkest time, HaKadosh Baruch Hu can be found. He's right there remembering us 
He's right there bringing the good after us. So true. And as you're saying, the darkness of darkness, we were in a time where we all spoke about how complicated things are, how much fighting is going on. There was that potential. There was this light within Am Yisrael. We knew it. We believed in it. But it was so dark, so many arguments, so many things. But then when there was Anan, when the darkness became much greater, suddenly the light shines from within all of us, from within all of Am Yisrael. And you just need to look around and see this beautiful light that was hidden within everybody. Everyone suddenly comes together and that rainbow, which again, in nature, is actually one light that's joined together, that's shining into many different lights, is exactly Am Yisrael as we see them today with that rainbow showing, and that rainbow will show. We see this in front of our own eyes. Exactly, exactly. Beautiful. We'll end with those words that Bezrat Hashem from Shemaim, the Shvokhu will see the unity and the chesed that's going on in our nation and in the world in general and will bring redemption, will bring Geula as soon as possible and destroy the evil out of this world. Amen, amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. And Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.